buy games. And if you look at virtual reality, the applications in enterprise, in education, uh, in business, in training, just all this huge, huge swath of things, they're all using game industry technology. Like they're all using game engines, they're using game tools. The people that are building enterprise VR tools are game developers, which is, and now they're able to go into these totally new industries that never would have funded game development, but they will fund you know, game, game development. <laughs> you know, in, in so from an education perspective, yeah. So the VR, like the game industry, I think, was kind of running into this rut where it was kind of topped out and it wasn't really going to be able to like, significantly progress technologically, at least not quickly. And I think that VR is going to hugely change the di dynamic by injecting many, many, many billions of dollars into the ecosystem that just never, ever would have gone into it otherwise because, they're, they, because they want VR. Not because they care about games, because right. they care about yeah. VR. Um, Good point. Yeah, it's going to be super cool. I mean, like, what people, it, it hasn't really happened yet, but things like asynchronous time warp and space warp, like, those are going to be used in traditional games too. And they're going to be used in enterprise stuff. They're going to be used in everything. Like, and it, like, tech, tech like that only only got developed because people were wanted to invest in VR. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm super thankful. I mean, it's great. I mean, small little idea. Oh, me too. Yeah. 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 It's great. It's going pretty well. Yeah. Cool. Well, if there's not any other questions. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to intend. The <laughs> trap. How do you think mixed reality is going to so are you, do you mean mixed reality or like Windows mixed reality? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let's be nice here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's just if you work on the Windows mixed reality team, you don't actually work on a mixed reality team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, okay, wait, 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 that's not, okay, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not that, that's not true. There are, there are Windows mixed reality, like obviously HoloLens. Yeah. Definitely falls into that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you could probably tell it's a silly, semantic, and ideological battle more than any kind of serious criticism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not offended. <laughs> Good. I guess fundamentally, I mean, so it, it, AR as, as, as it means. You, you it's all the same thing, and all these yeah. pundits who say that AR is going to kill VR completely miss the point, <laughs> yeah. and they shall be fired. They're like, a AR is going to. Destroy VR. It's like you—you you so don't get it. Like, Tim Cook might get it, but you also need to remember that people at Tim Cook's level are not allowed to get it. Like, <laughs> like, do you think that if Tim Cook got it and getting it meant that he had to say something that would be bad for Apple's share price, that he would be like, he has a fiduciary duty to his shareholders. He cannot go out and say something that shows that he gets it, that shows that Apple is not. He's not kidding. Yeah, um, it's the same thing with some of the people at Nintendo. Like, the Nintendo publicly says some stuff. People berate them and say, "Oh, they said VR isn't ready, and that there's you know, like someone someone said that you know there's nothing fun to do in VR yet, or something along those lines." Like, they don't get it. Oh, they're so dumb. They don't see it. It's like, no, no, they get it. They absolutely get it. But you think that no, Nintendo cool. is going to walk out and be like? Yes, VR is obviously the future of entertainment. And we have <laughs> That's why, man. That's kind of <laughs> right, and it's especially when it's when it's a company where, you, like on the one hand, you can say, oh, well, why don't they just say they're working on it then? Well, it turns out that sometimes the future of a technology is not does not put your company and their core competencies in a place to compete strongly. Like VR is, VR does not necessarily play well to the strengths of all companies. They're not going to talk about it and hype it up if it's going to lead to a world where they're not able to compete as effectively. Yeah. I mean, them saying that they're in it or doing something in it would potentially make that happen faster and make them less competitive more quickly. So, I, I think like I think Tim Cook gets it. I, I, I would be very surprised if he doesn't. What are you hoping to see today? Um, I have I have a lot. Of, I had a lot of meetings yesterday and today. So, most of the stuff most of the stuff that I wanted to see, I'm gonna be able to see. Um, I can't really say much more beyond that. <laughs> Fair question. Well, I mean, how far out do you think where, where products like Go actually have cellular connectivity and are sort of, you know, your primary, like where Dash is your, sort of your primary living space for all types of communication? You'd have to ask Facebook for their estimation. Do you have any thoughts on the Oculus? What? Do you have any thoughts on the Oculus Go? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> when do you think the killer app might be one of the virtual reality? You know, it's always like, and it's why like everyone's been searching for that content. And when do you think it's the type of content that will actually put VR to more people buying headsets? Hmm? Like, everything beyond? I, 
I don't know what the killer app's gonna do. If I knew, I would have been um, the, there, There's this risk when people talk about the killer app where it could be that the killer app is something that you cannot financially justify at this time. Like, I'm not, this is not me seriously making this point. It's a big disclaimer. But suppose that the killer app for VR that would drive adoption, if it existed, were a virtual reality MMO with a million players. Like, let's you know, th let's say that was the thing that would cause it to take off. Uh, it, that that killer app cannot exist because there's not enough people to actually like sustain and make it happen. Like, even money aside, money aside, suppose you said money is no object. We're we're just going to spend the money and lose money and do it. it doesn't matter because a game like that requires on a huge player base to be effective. Um, not just in terms of playing in an individual instance, but also social things. Like you know, being able to have a group of people that you're able to do this stuff with regularly. Like you really, a lot of these games rely on large, large groups. So what if we can't get to the killer app unless we actually slowly grow with things that are not necessarily the killer app? That might be the kind of slog that we're in. I mean, you also look at things like uh, Facebook or Twitter on mobile phones it's kind of a similar dynamic where the reason that they're so widely used is because they're so widely used and they're enabled by everyone already having computers and mobile phones. You, like, you imagine if people didn't all have personal computers and it was still all mainframes and nobody had smartphones and then one company came out with a smartphone like, and the killer app is this social networking application. You really, like, what's the point? Like, <laughs> nobody uses this, there's not enough people on it. All the value is in there being users. So, unfortunately, like, the killer app might end up they look at what people do on their phones. It is those types of applications. So the killer app might be something that we can't even make yet, which is kind of frustrating. What would you say that has to be something like the Flappy Bird, the farm bill, where, you know, people Just something really fun and addictive? So Flappy Bird isn't, like, I'm very good at that game. But I kind of like that. <laughs> but get games like that, and a lot of media like that, they're not successful because they're necessarily all that good. It's kind of really easy to understand, and it, it, like, it was a social phenomenon, basically. Like, everyone was playing it because everyone else was playing it. It's hard to have something like that happen in VR because you don't have enough people for the mimetics to work, where, for it to spread virally from person to person. Uh, and even if it, even you get every person in VR using it, like, it just doesn't even make a, even a tiny dent in the mainstream consciousness. Uh, you see similar things, like, have you ever seen the anime Kimono Friends? Yeah. Okay, is Kimono Friends actually good? No, of course it's not. It's not good. Like, the, the animation isn't good. And people are like, oh, the story is so good. They're wrong. It's not good. <laughs> like, nothing about it is good. But it took off and became wildly popular because of the social memetics behind it. Everyone was like, you got to see this thing. It's so bad, it's good. And everyone loves it. So everyone loves it. So everyone loves it. Uh, uh, my roommate comes in to watch it almost after three episodes. <laughs> I, I but, but, but he loves it, right? Yeah. See, like, why does he like it? I think he likes it because everyone else likes it, and it's like this common like thread. Social kind of exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and it's I like worked through the whole thing too, and I started reading about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also what you said about Flappy Bird, right? How it's so easy to understand. Yep. The more VR devs took that same principle of like, it needs to be stupid simple to understand. Oh yeah, it, it, it totally should. That's a good takeaway. Yeah. I'm just trying to say, even if you follow that, you make something that's as easy to understand and interesting as Flappy Bird or Kimono Friends. And even if it like takes off to the maximum extent possible in the current VR community, it right. still isn't going to lead to mainstream adoption. Like right. it's not going to be the killer app. Nobody's going to buy a rip to see VR Komodo friends or VR Flappy Bird. Right. Uh, like a killer app, like a hardware selling killer app, has to be way beyond those kind of flash in the pan trends. It's really hard to engineer those things. Right. Uh, people try and try and try and try yeah, and try their whole careers. Of dollars from <laughs> yeah, people, yeah. People spend their whole careers. Yeah, studios try their spend their whole their, their whole lifespan trying to make a hit like that. Yeah. Like it's the same thing with like like how many people are playing uh, player unknown battlegrounds? Uh, yeah, okay, so a bunch of people. Like that's another game where the value of the game is that everyone is playing the game. Like it was a perfect exactly. storm of just the right amount of hype, released with just enough features, easy to pick up, the right YouTube celebrities picked it up, the right Twitch streamers picked it up. Like you can't and I believe you cannot engineer that. Like that game I think could have come out like like butterfly effect style. It could have come out two weeks later and the currents could have blown slightly differently <laughs> and it wouldn't just have a hundred million. It would have been just unknown about <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. Oh, that's a good one. I'm sure I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I think that there are lots of games that could be 
that could be just that popular. The winds just didn't blow exactly in the right way, and you know maybe PewDiePie didn't scream <laughs> just the right way to make it <laughs> download. Like it, it's impossible to say. Right. So VR doesn't have enough users, I think, for those for those dynamics to really take over and force people to do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like the, the, yeah, it'll 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 happen at some point. Right. What would you think of the multi cloud platform where you know both non VR and VR players can play on something, but the VR players get something a bit better, maybe better line up? I, I really like that type of stuff. The, I don't think that's going to end up being the killer app, though. I think the killer apps are going to be applications that are built for virtual reality. Some of them are some fire hazard. I mean, you have like really dangerous. Right. Oh yeah, like Elite Dangerous is a great example. And yeah. like Elite Dangerous and also simulation titles in general are a great fit for this because simulation titles by their very nature are trying to present as realistic of an experience with you know scale models and everything, even in the PC version. So you right. put them in VR and it's the same thing, it's all great. Whether it's a driving sim or a space sim, those are gonna work really well. But when you start looking at first person shooters, uh, or especially multiplayer games, it's very, very difficult to have it's very, very difficult for those types of games to have really great VR gameplay and also really great, uh, really great nor normal yeah. gameplay. Yeah. Especially competitive games. Like competitive games become this huge, huge mess. It kind of works in Elite Dangerous. Even then, there's actually like in Elite Dangerous, it's bizarre because VR players do have a huge advantage in some ways, but it's actually counteracted by a lot of just the limitations of current VR hardware, like the resolution. Right. If you had perfect VR hardware, people in VR and Elite Dangerous would be just ripping a new one just, for yeah, everyone exactly. else. Like, it would just be completely, uh, they'd be completely untouchable. So let's go a few years in the future, like to pretend we have better headsets and we're not balanced out by hardware limitations. Uh, how do you make a competitive game where people that are sitting, you know, using a monitor and using a mouse are competing against people who are actually standing, physically moving, physically aiming, right, it's things like, the, like that. The console controller versus the keyboard and mouse, keyboard and mouse. Oh, okay. uh, and it's like that magnified, like magnified, tenfold. Yeah, yeah, magnified tenfold. Like a mouse is a very, very different way to aim than using oh. your own. Right, using point and shoot like this is much different than point and shoot. Like everyone has that, I think a lot of people have a bizarre, uh, a lot of people have a distorted view of how good they are at aiming in VR because of the generous <laughs> auto aim that everyone is using in VR. Yeah. Like they use generous auto aim. Believe yeah. me, yeah. everyone knows. It. Yeah. Uh, and it's because people are actually like pretty awful at actively aiming on something and keep it on target. A mouse is a superhuman input device. Like, it, let, let, like let's be clear, it allows you to do things that you could never ever do with that kind of precision with your own with your own hands and fingers. Um, if you try turning off auto aim and this is the VR games that do allow it, it's really, really hard to like have any kind of angular precision. And a mouse is just really good at that. So having mouse versus VR, I, it's very, very difficult to balance. I've seen some asymmetrical gameplay ideas where basically you say, look, I'm gonna treat it totally differently. I'm not gonna try to make them play the same character. I'm gonna have you know VR guys in ships and FPS players on the ground. And it's a totally different game and you know balance totally differently. And I, th I think that can work. Pretty well. uh, asymmetrical, so like one of the, we've, I've, I've talked about it with friends, so asymmetrical <coughs> VR sort of mastermind controlling the 